Welcome back to the Invest in Yourself podcast. Today's guest on the show is an upcoming rap artist by the name of Lyric Luciano. Growing up, Lyric was involved with the street life for a number of years. Lyric discovered a passion for making music and never looked back to the streets. He has been making music for a number of years now. His style is so different and that's what stood out to me. He raps about pain that everyday people go through on a daily basis, such as depression, anxiety, suicide, drug addiction, and current events. Lyric's different with his rap. He actually builds up people with his music, not bring them down like a lot of music that we hear today. Lyric has a massive following of people that listen to his music. His TikTok almost has over half a million followers now. He is a self-made man and wants to help people in a real way. Please subscribe to my channel for more interviews like this. And without further ado, let's get into Lyric's story. All right, man. How you doing, Lyric? How's it going? Pretty damn good, man. Thank you for coming on. No problem at all, man. Yeah, well, I appreciate it, man, because you got a a really interesting style with your rapping, man. And I really want to get into how you got into it. And, you know, we'll talk about some of your songs and what what motivates you to do these. So how did you get started with rapping? Uh, I got started with music uh, in high school. I was 17 years old. Um, The crazy part about it is I never wanted to be a rapper, but two of my friends, they were uh, a DJ and one was a rapper. And it actually got me to start rapping. Um, What's crazy is it's two. It was two white guys, and um, so I didn't know that like they was you know persistent. And when I was coming up, you know I'm I'm, I come from a background of you know nothing but black folks. So two white guys in school stood out like you know like a sore thumb, man. Yeah. Got me. Got me to start rapping, bro. Yeah, well, you know, that you just never know, man. I mean, you give people opportunities, you know what I mean? And you see, see what works, man. And so you did. And, I mean, growing up as well, I mean, wh- how was it like? Because, I mean, the, the style with your music is, talks about a lot of, you know, you, you cover, you know, relationship stuff. You cover depression. You cover current events and everything. So what really inspired you to get into that? Because it sounds like you really had a lot of shit going on when you were growing up that you would went through. Yeah, I've been. I've I've had a horrible life, um, and not to not to take from or take away, you know, from anybody else. But I've had a, a, a bad, you know, pretty much bad life. Um, so my experience come comes from me going through it, of course, and um, trauma, pain, funerals, a violent background uh, is what you see today except for it's not i'm not promoting what i where i come from i'm not promoting violence i'm not promoting um i'm actually doing the opposite and the reason why i want to the reason why i want to do the opposite is because if i would have had somebody when i was coming up to be a leader to me uh to help me get through the things that i was going through i would have turned out a little bit better so that's all i'm trying to do for others um that's going through similar situations i have yet to tell my life story and that's for a reason but when i do tell it people will understand and uh i think people will be taken by it i think so too man just because of the fact that i mean you you do briefly touch on certain topics of your life and different things that you went through growing up you know and uh but I mean, you mainly focus on the future, current events, and just really motivating and bringing positivity to the, you know, the whole industry is what it seems like, man. So when when you do that, I mean, you, you I, what I came across to you, you were on TikTok, and I was like, damn, man, this guy's different. He's really got a different, you know, style to him. All right, so man, that's what really brought me to coming to you across your account and coming across you and you're rapping because i mean you talk about things that are you know different man they're really you know positive you bring people up you don't tear them down you don't talk shit i mean it's just really about being you know a genuine good person and trying to you know not help just yourself but other people around you so why, why do you do that um because i didn't have it um coming up uh and then i know people we at a time right now in life where it's not really too much motivation that you can get on social media. It's not, not too much. And, no. um, you know, back in the day, they used to have a lot more than what it is now. So I figured that somebody needed to hear 
hear words to lift them up and it's easily it's easy to get broken in this life and what i try to do is just lift them back up try to say motivational things to them inspire somebody who's been broken or who's went through the same thing that i've been through especially with relationships man relationships is not easy so i just wanted people to to know that you're not the only one going through it not only that but it can i can see how you can you know have ptsd from relationships also it's, it just doesn't come from war mm -hmm. so you know um with depression that's another topic that people really wasn't talking about i'm starting to see more people talking about depression now but it's just another topic that um people were straying away from man when you when you dealing with depression it's times you don't want to be here no more right and that is not that's something serious to talk about and a lot of people a lot of people feel like that so if i could give them some type of hope some type of light some type of uh relatable that i also experienced the same thing that you know at least that's going to do something for them at least I think so, too, because, I mean, it could really show them, hey, man, you went through this, but look what I went through. I mean, it, it may be a little bit more, maybe a little bit less, but it's still something that, you know, you can relate to on some sort of level because, I mean, they, yeah, they can, you know, hold it in, whatever, you know, but it, I mean, it don't matter. I mean, like if they're scrolling through, you know, like they go through TikTok, they see what you got coming out, you know, even if they're they, they ain't talking about it. I mean, they at least they know someone's putting that kind of stuff out there. I mean, exactly. you're still, you got that effect. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and um, you know, a few of the songs that I like to talk about is, uh, you, you know, yeah, I mean, we can, you know, since we're on that depression, one that we're talking about is, you know, the song you made called Deep Depression, and that one was really good. You did the Puffy remix, you put the beat on there of, uh, you know, I'll miss, be missing you, and that one is another one where you just talk about motivating people to never stop, and you're not the only one going through that. What kind of feedback have you gotten on that? On Deep Depression? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've been That's my biggest record to date. Oh, I'm sure, man. Deep Depression is my biggest record. I think it did. Okay, <laughs> let me try to add all this up. It did. A year ago, I released Deep Depression, and it did 1.4 million on TikTok. Damn. Um, so August of this year, I came back to re-release it, and it did 6.2 million on TikTok. Damn. So I released it on Facebook the same day that I released it on TikTok, and they're both at 6.2 million on Facebook and TikTok. So that song alone has has like, and this is what I wanted. I wanted to like set, I wanted to to, to plant my feet in people's minds and their heart and their soul. And then, you know, to the point where when you hear me, when you look at me, whenever you see me, you know I'm coming with real. I don't want people to feel like, yo, I'm coming with uh, club music, BS music. No, I want when you see lyric, bro, that is pain. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. that's I mean, pain. That's 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 healing. I want people to see when they see me. So I, it's a good thing for me that Deep Depression did do what it did do, um, the numbers that it did, because when people see my face, they know automatically, yo, I'm I'm tired today. I'm going through it today. I am going to find this lyric song to get me through the day. You know what I mean? So that's that's what I like. Yeah, no, I mean that, that that's awesome. I would imagine that one would do so well because it's so relatable on so many different you know ideas. I mean the beat, of course, as well. I mean it's a remix and stuff. People love that. But on top of that, bro, I mean you made it into a you know deep depression song and just helping people get through it. And it's relatable whether people want to talk about it or not. I mean you, I mean the results speak for themselves. <laughs> oh, definitely. And then the puffy <laughs> people was like, he was like, oh, you gonna have to run in the puffy, and then you know he, he paying Sting or I, I have an X amount of dollars. <laughs> this is how you know I'm my I put my soul in everything I do because I don't care, bro. I don't yeah. care when we I cross that bridge when we get there if it's a problem. But I'm talking about depression, bro. How hard you gonna be on somebody that's talking about depression and is trying to help? people in life you gonna you gonna triple down on me you yeah. triple down on me bro if i gotta take them shots and that's what i just gotta do 
but I'm getting my message out to people no matter how I got to do it, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, I feel it, man. It's like uh, it, it's deep. It's really big exposure for you on top of that, man, especially, you know, for you just, you know, coming up and doing that. I mean, that for that one to blow up like that, I mean, that, that's awesome. And it'll really give you exposure and then you can focus on the whole, you know, money aspect and shit like, yeah. you know, what I mean? what's that? Bridge my, goes man, my, man, my man was telling me, he's like, yo, Larry, I ain't going to hold you, bro. That song blew the hell up, but yeah, you're going to have to deal with all that extra stuff. I said, it's cool. I'm going I'm to deal with all the extra stuff when it come, if it come, however it come. But I know that's bigger than the industry to me, man. I got a mission up top for that from, from, from God, bro. I'm, and, I, and that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm delivering the message no matter who beat it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I feel you got God behind you. <laughs> yeah, no matter who beat it is, bro. Because I already know later down the road, they're going to be like, yo, Lyric, bro, what's up with you snatching the people's beats? <laughs> hey, bro, I'm getting my message out. And a lot of my material on Apple Music is Spotify, all original. Well, not all. Most of those are original. Yeah. But it don't matter whether it's an industry beat or, uh, or, um, or, or original beat, depending on how I'm getting my emotion across that beat, that's that's what I'm going with. Yeah, no, I know. It's not like you said, not all your songs have that, you know, the, the beats, you know, where you where they're from another guy or whatnot. But it's like, you know, they're, they're, the, they're the ones that people already automatically, you know, hooks them and draws them in because they, they, they know that beat. But Play then the they, <laughs> then they want to hear your, your version of it, man. And... and Lil Wayne made a whole living off of <laughs> dedications and and like, come on, bro. That's how they gonna do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what you gotta go, man. Just copy what he did. <laughs> yeah, bro. I'm like at this point, bro, we just take anybody be and get it. You know, however you gotta get to wherever you gotta get to. But the message did get across to people, and um, it still has more people to to get through. Um, so deep depression has been my number one. And I think the follow-up song after Deep Depression right now is Loving You Hurts. Um, yeah, so it's it's still following up. It's doing pretty good. Yeah, I mean, that, that's another good one that I, that I had written down because, I mean, that one talks about being in a relationship where you're in a fight and then the next next minute you're, uh, you know, doing the dirty, <laughs> you know, <laughs> just, just a toxic relationship and stuff. But, I mean, uh, you know, it's like you said in the song, you know, hard saying – to go and or, or your heart's staying to say but your mind's saying go you know exactly <laughs> so it sounds like you you've been through it with some relationships and stuff as well <laughs> man <laughs> i have a lot of people think when i make these songs i'm going through it right now no that's how that's how much i've been through bro <laughs> i i'm not even going through it right now i'm at a great place in my life you know my kids is happy i'm happy I'm good. Uh, my career, as far as a musician, is, is good. Um, so I'm not going through too much. This is all past experience off of memory. Yeah. See, I mean, so, that that's what people realize. Need to, you know, we do realize eventually. I mean, if they know that, I mean, you think about anybody coming up, any rapper, you know, or that has, you know, crossed that mark to where they, they're out of the street. You know what I mean? They still talk about it. It's like, okay, these are memories or war stories or something that they went through and I mean, now it's not like they're currently doing it. They got millions of dollars and shit, but it's like in your situation as well. You went through it coming up and now you're in a good position in your life. And I can tell you good. I mean, you're smiling, happy and everything, but I'm, the music and everything, and, and you relive it and it takes you back to that moment, I think. Yeah. Hey, if you would have called me about two, three years ago. You would have called me in the, in the, and like the, and, and right in it. But I have a good, um, I have a good memory when it comes down to trauma for some reason that's so weird but i have a good memory when it comes down to trauma so i just put and i remember what i felt in that time of me going through it and i just put it put it down and then it, it so happens that other people are going through the same way and how it felt and emotionally and all this stuff like that so either way whether it's 10 years down the road or 10 years before where i'm at right now the emotion don't leave not when it comes down to hurt, bro. The emotion stays the same. I think uh, a lot of people can relate to that because it's like, 
I mean, yeah, you think about all the good times and shit, but like for whatever reason, you know, the negative, the bad, they always stand out no matter what when you look back on any situation. I mean, it just pops out more than all the good. I mean, you could add all this good in relationship, friends, whatever, but it's like, you know, the bad shit or whatever still stays, you know, it stands out more. So I could see how you, you can, you know, look back and just relate to it and be able to relive it, especially if you wrote it down and what you were feeling at that time in that moment. <laughs> And I smoke cigarettes, another thing, to any, any one of my fans, any child that's watching this video or whoever, do, do not smoke. This this came from trauma. These, <laughs> I, still, I got some healing to do still, so I'm not perfect. So. Yeah. You, yeah, no, no one's perfect, man. I mean, you're just trying to come up and, uh, you, know, yeah. you know, I mean, from where you were, like you said, a couple of years ago was a whole lot different, man. Probably oh, wouldn't God. be having this conversation, you know what I mean? <laughs> Most definitely, and and I wouldn't, I wouldn't even be able to tell people to keep their head up, stay strong. If if I didn't have a, um, like a a heart, bro. Like I I I got a heart. I do, bro. I'm not I'm not a crazy human being, or I'm not a person that's out here, you know, promoting murder. That's no. not that's not how I want it to go. That's not that's not my vision. Mm -hmm. my, my vision is, is is a little bit way way different than that. It's the opposite. I want to bring people together, and I want our pain to you know. Yeah, it, I, I think you're doing that just right because I mean, even with your song "Suicide Prevention," you know, you let people know that they're not the only one going through a rough time, and you know, I mean, I think we all probably know someone, or you know, at least a friend of a friend or something that has attempted that, or even. It went through with it so i mean that's i mean i mean it shouldn't even be like that but unfortunately it's getting you know numbers seem to always raise and raise with that yeah it's a it's a, it's a scary thing man and i've i've been there also um yeah. i'm gonna give you some real i'm gonna give you some real bro if you don't mind yeah yeah absolutely um, i i didn't been there before and the, the, the gun jammed damn this is why this is why I I'm like, you know, God is like, yo, you know what, just go another route. That's that's a story, another story for a different moment, but it's true. Um and so yeah, it's I've been there before and I'm so I'm trying to I'm trying to stop somebody from making that same mistake that I tried to make. Yeah. I mean, uh, uh, do you ever plan on making a song about that particular situation? Yeah. Um it I'm yeah, gonna just have to. I'm gonna just have to go to like. I gotta go to what. I gotta go to that deep place inside of me, like I did deep depression, like I did mama. And I'm gonna have to just pull it out, and it's just gonna have to come out the way it does. Yeah. No. No. I hear you, cause I'm. You know, when you made that song uh, about your mother, man, that was. I mean, I'll tell you what. That's my favorite one, man. I'm serious, because. Thanks. I mean that that was a really good song. I mean, really emotional. I mean, what what what. what to the people that haven't heard it, I mean, we kind of break down what that song is about. Mama is a tribute to my mother, but it's not a tribute to like, like a, like a, oh, you was a great lady, oh, all this stuff like that. She was a great lady, lady, excuse me. But this is a tribute more of her leaving and what I had to uh, experience after she left and what I, I thought. Because uh, I thought in my head, for some reason, I was going to go before my mother went. And so that impact of her leaving hit me so hard that I just had to pour out my tears on that song. It was more of a vent than it was a, a writing a song. I've never vented like that ever in my life in a song. They just came out. And due to the fact that she is a, is a beautiful, she was a beautiful woman. She was a, a strong woman. Um, she was one of her kind. And I don't say that just because it's my mama. No, my mom was the type of person that was a very forgiving person. Not only that, but she would give the shirt off her back for anyone. Um, she would like, I would walk in a room and this is why building your children up is so important because it stayed with me. I would walk in a room because she used to play cards a lot. You know, we from the hood. <laughs> <laughs> she used to play cards a lot. So I would walk in the card room 
and she'd be like, um, there go King, there goes King, there goes my King. <laughs> I never understood. I was like, why my mama keep calling me King? But it <laughs> built my confidence up to make me feel like I'm a King. So, mm -hmm. you know, it was just, my mama was, was different. I felt like in my life and it hurt me to my core. I felt like I lost my best friend, a hole in my chest. And that's what you got right now is, is mama. The song is out for everybody to hear. Yeah. And, you know, one takeaway that I really took from, from that song as well is I think a lot of people would relate to is that, you know, you talk about her, no one caring about you as much as her ever again. I mean, because that's one type of love that you never that's one experience that you never get back or, you know, give from anyone because that, that's that's your, you know, your, your go to. That's your person. I mean, that's who's been there literally since day one. Since day one, when uh, <laughs> I, I've been spent every moment with my, I, I, like, my mama, I mean, she, when she brought, she gonna bring you into the world. So imagine being in this world without her. I, after a period of time, a long period of time, you, you she died when I was 26. So when you 26 years old, you've been, you've been on the planet with the same person who brought you into this world, you know, first time you open your eyes, you see your mom, all this stuff like that. So it really, I felt like I really felt alone. I felt like, yo, this is who I came in the world with. And now she's no longer here. And I feel alone. And, um, cause your mama is going to get you through when you ever, you, whenever you bump your head, whenever you go straight, whenever you make bad decisions, if somebody that's always going to be there as far as your mother, it's like, yo, my son is still this. My son is still that. I love my son no matter how bad he, whatever. So I don't, that part left. So now when I'm making, if I made a decision, a bad decision, I got to, I got to eat that, bro. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no one else. My you're gonna... was my scapegoat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, literally, man. Now, I know, no, I, I hear you, man. That's, that's, that's tough, man. But I'm, I'm glad you made that song to, you know, help other people. You know, I mean, with this life, that's just something we can't avoid. Death. There's, there's no way around it. I mean, we, but I mean, you just do your best and try to get close to God, and I mean, hopefully, on the other side, we all reunite. And that's all we can pray for. You know what I mean? That's a fact. <clears> then <throat> another song that I wanted to talk about as well is, uh, you know, drug addiction. That one was a really good one, and you had talked about. I mean, just letting people know if, if you're still here, God's giving you the chance, you know, and, and if you're listening to me, I mean, there's that's what you say. I mean, if you're hearing this, I mean, you got to change it around. There's, you got to do it for your kids, your family, whatever it may be. What what was the inspiration behind that one? I had friends that were strung out on drugs. I didn't had girlfriends that ended up becoming exes that ended up dating a dude, beautiful, gorgeous from her head to her toe. Ended up dating a dude. He got a strung out on drugs, and her them that them looks deteriorated, and her mind deteriorated. The same person is it wasn't the same person. Some of my friends, I I seen the battle that they were having. Um, so instead of me lecturing them, I would I try to be around them more, and I would try to like just try to help them with with that it's I couldn't pull them away from it but what I could do was make a song and hopefully the lecture that I'm having in the song it don't sound like a lecture it sounds more like you know this is a soundtrack to my life so one of one of one of my friends that's on drugs actually wrote me and was like yo bro that line the line of when I said um God is giving you a second chance don't keep knocking on that door he stopped doing drugs. Damn. <laughs> so instead of me lecturing with my mouth, I just put it in my art and it got through him that way. So I, I, that's what I wanted. The power of music, man. That's, that's insane. I mean, literally, because I mean, if you can think about it, man, you went, went and lectured all of them. I mean, they right. would have just said, yeah, yeah, you're right. But then, you know, they would have just blew it off is what it seems to be. I mean, when we all, I mean, if, you know, like, again, you have a friend of a friend that have talked about it or went through it or personally know someone that's addicted to drugs, alcohol, whatever it may be. They say, yeah, yeah, you're right. You know, whatever. But I mean, it comes down to it. You know, they just keep doing the shit. But I mean, sometimes it works, sometimes it don't. But in your case, I mean, if you were able to touch one of them, that's that, that, the whole song was worth it. <laughs> and then it was like it was more so like, yeah, I mean, bro, you, you are knocking on that door. 
And I don't know a lot of, you know, a lot of people that keep, that continues to knock on that door, it doesn't, you know, they get, when it opens, it's just, they wish they never did. So, and I've always, I've been also been around people who've had drug overdoses. And I know how it affects the family. Um, it's just terrible and it crushes everything. So anyone out here who's listening to this, I, I want you to at least try to shake it. I know it's a demon. I know you've been fighting to shake it. But if you can for your family, for your kids, if you have kids, even if you don't have kids, so you are important to somebody. So I, I, I want you to please try to shake it the best way you can. That's true. I mean, it's not just the, the, the person going through it. I mean, it's the family, the friends that all have to, you know, see this person that they love get torn, torn down by the drugs. Either they die or they just continue to struggle through life. But no, I think that's another good song, man. You made another good message behind it. And that's really what, you know, for me, that's what, I, like I was telling you before we started, that's what I really look for with, you know, music, rap and all that stuff. It's just something different that's, you know, trying to have a strict, strictly good meaning behind it, man. I mean, like you said, you ain't promoting streets, ain't nothing like that. Just pain, shit that you went through. Just pain, no. And, um, yeah, just pain. Yeah, um, uh, you know, another song that you did was, you know, we talked about your mother, but we also, you also made a song about your dad as well. And, uh, the, you know, you, you said your so-called father is what you said, but I mean, you know, things could have been a lot different for you growing up. I mean, maybe you wouldn't have drove into the street life and things could have been a lot different if he was around is what I kind of got from that. Yeah. You know, being on that? My father, um, when I was five years old, he went to prison. Um, for drug trafficking. And between that time, him gone, he, he left at five and came back when I was 17. Damn. That's too much of a span time for me not to develop my own brain. I, I'm already, I'm on, I'm at this point, I'm already in the streets. I'm mm -hmm. already getting in trouble. I'm already getting locked up. By the time he came home, it was cool. Everything was fine. But he never, he always ran from his issues and his problems. He always, he, well, he's institutionalized. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah. institutionalized and then like on top of that, it was it was just a lot. So, and dad, I, I, that's another song that I dug deep into. And uh, these are things I wanted to tell him. I wanted to tell him, and I know he never gonna hear it. You know, because he's locked up still, or no? No, he's home. He's home. He's been, he's been home, but he's just like he's just like um, he's the opposite of me. Yeah, we, we two different people. Like we we two different people. Um, he's more of a. Oh, the old older way I can't explain him, um, <laughs> but he's more of an older way of doing things. He, he uses words like "young man," "young man." Like, you know, <laughs> right. Yeah, shit um, you ain't used to. Yeah, like I'm just like yo. It, the better way he like he's like a, 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 a OG in the prison. <laughs> he's, just, <laughs> he's just home. Yeah. So when he see me, when he see me, it's kind of like uh, one of those. I ain't forgive you, but all all because I didn't forgive you, you're still a parent. I'm not going to disrespect you, but and and my art firm art form, oh, I'm, I'm gonna give it to you, <laughs> just like that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, well, one thing that I'll, we could wrap up on is you know you you do a lot of current events, like songs and stuff like that. Wise and um, you know one that you had brought up did was the mass shootings, and so that's talking about where all these shootings and stuff going down at schools, concerts, public places. I mean, wow. you kind of talk about what, what drew you to make this, you know, that song. When it first happened, uh, U Valley, Texas, and I think it was 2019, 20, I may be mistaken, I don't know. I Before anybody knew who I was, I went live on Facebook and I was crushed. I was crushed, man, um, pretty bad. I love children. <laughs> like. I love children. They innocent. They they like 
So, so for someone to take or harm children, it's already bad enough. I see a lot of ch children going through bad stuff in the world, but for you to take 19 children, kill 19 children, it's kids getting killed by stray bullets every day. It's, it's, it's bad. Um, that, I still haven't recovered from that, and I'm never going to recover from that. And he want to kill kids. That's not, it's not okay with me, bro. It's never going to be okay with me. Anybody that harm kids, anybody that do anything to to, 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 to hurt a child would never be okay with me. It would never sit right in my soul. So, you Valley, Texas, I can only imagine how many people was affected by that. Um, that was a sad time that doesn't get talked about enough for some reason. That's a moment in time, a moment in a moment in history was it's a tragedy. They need to have their own day. It needs to be a day in your valley, Texas, for the for the, for the 19, 19 children that got murdered. And for the um the teacher that got murdered, teachers, I think it was two teachers that got murdered also. That's not okay. And I and so in mass shooting in my song. The news reporter basically saying like, "Yo, this this is it's, it's insane. It is insane." And the more we don't talk about it, the more this type of stuff can happen because it needs to be somebody got to do something. It has to be something in place to where this doesn't happen again. And I know we can't stop shootings. I know we can't stop children from getting murdered. I know it's always going to be a coward somewhere lurking in the, in the dark, ready to do some harm. But like, damn, bro. I damn, know. Bro, like, uh, and I, I'll tell you what, too. I remember when maybe 10, 15 years ago, I remember there was a shooting. Uh, I don't even remember which one it was, but it was just a, another elementary. And I was just maybe 15 years ago, whatever. I, I was young. I was like in elementary or uh, middle school. And I remember hearing about it. Like, I was just like, you know, because I had a little brother in elementary. So it just like, you know, it ate me up, too. It made me actually cry. And I'm like, you know, it freaked me out as a young kid because I'm like, what the fuck? He's just these kids were just going to school. This doesn't make any sense at all. I mean, it's like, why would someone do that? You know, it just makes you question why, why? I mean, that I mean, like, so I can see what you mean, like with kids and stuff. I mean, it's like that, that should never, ever, ever happen. Because like you said, there's just so innocent. Why why would someone do that? Right. Taking they, they didn't get a chance to live, to experience love, to experience heartbreak, to experience. Right. I mean, you, you, we should not have the right to take away from anybody, anybody's life. We don't have, we're mm -hmm. not God and we shouldn't play God, but we you know people do it every day. And I just, it's just sad that 19 children are no longer here because of a coward. I'll never, I'll never respect it. I'll never understand that. And no matter where I'm at in my career, I'm gonna always say the same thing. That's some cowardly shit. Excuse my language. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, man. Absolutely. It brings right. in a lot of emotion and everybody. So I'm, no, I can completely see that, man. Um, well, to, to wrap up, I mean, what, what do you got going on now? What, do, what are you working on? Right now, everybody been asking me yo, when the tour going to start. Yeah. I don't even know yet. I have <laughs> I don't have an answer for people because I'm not under management. I don't have a manager. Um, it's all just me. I, I, whatever I post on social media is just me. Um, I guess right now I'm gonna just keep swinging, swinging at the um the fence until somebody comes and be like, "Oh, Lyric, I want to manage you." I know for one thing though, my name my name is making noise because when I'm out in public, people ask me to take pictures. So <laughs> something, something is something is working. And, um, my fan base, as far as my supporters go, I think we almost at five hundred thousand on Facebook followers wise. Yeah. And I think we have 406,000 on TikTok. Yeah. And my name is, is getting out there. So I'm trying to figure out where the managers and labels at. So, <laughs> yeah, they should be ringing any minute now, ringing the door. Y'all like, oh, see me out here. Don't be playing. <laughs> man. Yeah, no, I mean, because you, you got to definitely get a good story. I mean, you, you, def, you differentiate yourself from everyone else and that's what's up and that's awesome and that's why people and i know man there's going to be good things in the future for you because well, i mean no one else is really doing that man there's not a, there's not a lot of guys out here doing the same style that you're doing completely different so 
You know, when I say just stay at it, man, and, you know, I'll keep following you, watching you, man, supporting you any way I can, and I'm going to keep keep fucking with you, man. <laughs> I appreciate Thanks, you. Brother. taking I the time. appreciate it. I had, um, I had a couple meetings with a couple labels, and I don't think they know how to market me. Like they, they, I don't know what it is. It's like they, it's like, all right, bro, you, cause I, you know, the ANRs is like, yo, bro, you slamming on everything on your own. All the hard work, you doing it on your own. Yeah. I'm like, that's still on me. I don't need help, bro. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, so it's like one of those, but I'm praying, you know, um, with the, with the love from, from God and my mama that, you know, something come down is like, somebody come down and be like, yo, lyric, bro. All right, we're going we're gonna to do this so I can change my family's lives. And the tour, as far as the tour goes, if it don't happen, somebody don't reach out to me in the next month or two, I'm going to just start my own tour. And then you, they don't want me to go independent. So no. somebody better come and get me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you could do it, man. I mean, there's there's rappers that did that. I, I believe, uh, uh, you know, Nipsey Hussle's, uh, you know, homeboy Jay Stone. He, I went to his concert and I think he took himself on there and he went on tour and just did his own shit a couple of years back. I mean, sometimes you got to do it. And sometimes that's where I'm at. That's where I'm at the point where if I start independent, if I go independent and I'm making my own money, they better come and get me now while I'm not, I'm, I'm just chilling. I'm making music. They throw me, offer me a number real quick. I'm depending on what it is. I might go for it. But if I do it independent, I start making money on my own. I'm taxing the fuck out of you labels. <laughs> <laughs> they better hurry up and get on this shit then, now <laughs> before the price goes up. <laughs> Definitely, man. Hey, well, I appreciate it, Lyric. No problem at all, brother. Lyric got one very interesting story. He is making a very positive impact on this planet. He has really turned his life around for the better. Lots of people involved with crime can really learn from his story. It's never too late to make a change in your life. Please comment any key takeaways that you got from this interview. Please share it with anyone that you think will enjoy this type of content. Also, all of Lyric's social medias will be in the video description. Please subscribe to my channel for more interviews like this. And thank you again for watching.